This is the five-year Pentax 645Z review. Yo, what is up? It's JJ from 845, and while this channel has been more dedicated to my video work, I was and still am a portrait and commercial photographer first. This is a Pentax 645Z. It's a digital medium format with 51.5 megapixels that was released on April 15, 2014 with an MSRP of $8,500. It is a beast of a camera that weighs 3.4 pounds, just the body and battery alone. It is weather sealed, has no built-in flash. It does have an articulating 3.2 inch uh, LCD screen. Um, and so paired with live view is quite perfect for all those awkward angles. And it does have USB 3.0 that keeps it relevant enough today for tethered shooting. Since buying this camera on May 16, 2015 for $6,373 used and making this my workhorse, I haven't looked back on full frame. There is a debate that you can't tell the difference between a medium format camera and a 35 millimeter full frame and not even adding the APS-C cameras because nowadays a lot of cameras do have high megapixel count. Uh, for example, Sony A7R Mark IV, Canon 5DS, Panasonic Lumix S1R, Nikon Z7. And you know what? That elusive medium format look, I probably can't discern the difference between photos taken from all of those cameras uh, that I mentioned, especially if it has the similar settings and the similar focal length. But in reality, the image that will look best will always be in the eye of the beholder. I've actually written about this before on Medium because for me, what it comes down to is how does the camera make you feel when using it? And sometimes conceitedly when you're seen with it. Like a this is a six-year-old camera and by today's standards, this is a dinosaur. And last I checked on YouTube, naturally, not many people are talking about this camera given in its age. Uh, so in this video, I do wanna share the pros and cons of using the 645Z camera. So let's start with the cons. The first con, it is slow, all of it. For example, when I shoot in continuous drive mode, the camera sometimes freezes and I have to pop out the battery to do a quick hard reset. And yes, I am using the appropriate SD cards. It is somewhat funny, kind of nervous when I'm showing a client um, a preview of the image that I just made on the back of the camera and that busy hourglass icon is there instead of the image. My workaround to that problem of the camera sometimes freezing up, as I chat with a client, I secretly remove the battery without losing eye contact, pop it back in and I go, cool, are you go ahead and ready for a shot? Second con, three frames per second. You definitely won't be spraying and praying with this camera. Enough said. Third con, it's heavy. It's a pretty big camera by itself and the lenses themselves are also just as big. So it's most likely not a traveler's camera unless you're traveling for work. Fourth con, the prices of the lenses. The camera body isn't cheap as mentioned, so for sure the lenses aren't cheap either. I used to have a few more lenses than I do now, including the 45 to 85 zoom lens, the 120 macro, but have since downsized uh, my equipment. Currently, I rely on two, three lenses. That third lens is a $1,600 35 millimeter 3.5 that stays in my kit. I rarely use it, uh, but just in case if I do need a wide angle, it is there in my bag. The 55 2.8 is on the camera body by default, and this lens is $1,200. But my coveted lens is the 90 millimeter 2.8. It is a macro lens, so it's perfect for product shots, but it's also really great for portraits. And this thing is $4,500 MSRP. Next con is flash sync speed, which is 125th of a second. And by far, this is the worst flash sync speed I've had to work with, considering my first DSLR was a Minolta 7D, and that was 160th of a second. In comparison, Nikon and Canon is around 200th of a second, if I'm not mistaken. And because the majority of my work utilizes flash, being able to have a high flash sync speed is important to not only control ambient light, but to ensure that my subjects are crisp. I will say though that Pentax has LS lenses, which stand for leaf shutter. These lenses have a shutter in the lenses themselves. Because it doesn't rely on the camera shutter, it can allow sync speeds up to 500 of a second. I've never had a need for these lenses only because modern flashes today, like the Godox 8200, have 
pretty decent HSS capabilities. That's high sync speed. Plus, I also don't shoot flash in full bright sun. Now, here are the pros. First one, the medium format sensor. It's huge, and with it being much larger, you'll obviously have more room to crop, but the quality in itself is a lot better, again to me, uh, than 35 millimeter or APS-C. Also, part of that medium format look is actually that smoother focus fall off. Now, it is weird to describe the quality of the camera, what actually isn't in focus, but I think once you see the images from this camera, especially in shallow depth of field, that transition from what is sharp to uh, out of focus is a lot smoother. And for me, there's much appreciation seeing that as opposed to the 35 millimeter full frame. Next pro is a 4-3 image ratio. Personally, this is my favorite part of media format, maybe because I grew up in an era when 4-3 was normal before widescreen, aka 16-9 took over. Maybe because you get more top bottom view as opposed to a wider view. And me being a portrait slash uh, commercial photographer, it looks better. Next up is dynamic range. I know every camera has it, but here are some recent photos I did for a high school friend and her family at San Francisco's Land's End. <laughs> As much as I've become accustomed to LUTs and presets and visco, this time around I just simply adjusted the color balance and really let the camera's files and colors shine. Next pro, the shutter. Having an electronic leaf shutter is clutch when you're on set and need to be incognito. But when I don't need to, hearing the shutter for me is also part of the process of making the images. Something about it being loud also tells a subject that it's okay to move and change position and try something new. It's also this auditory cue that tells everyone that yes, time was stopped to take this photo. And yes, that was a philosophical stretch. But just listen to the shutter. Sounds good. And the last pro, it's slow. Yes, that was the first con, but sometimes having limitations on the speed of the camera makes you more deliberate when taking a photo. Since I don't capture sports or wildlife, I don't have to rely on the fastest autofocus or frame rate. So for me, a camera that is responsive to my finger pressing the shutter once works perfectly fine, as opposed to relying on continuous burst mode, AKA spraying and praying. And those are the pros. And to be honest, even after owning this camera for five years, I still don't know every feature. Because for me, my process with my portrait sessions and this camera is quite simple. I use a flash meter so I know the power settings on my strobe in which my aperture is close to F8, more or less. Shutter is at 125th of a second, unless I'm dragging it to have more ambient light. I'm keeping the ISO low, and then I just rely on the center single point autofocus where I hold and recompose. While I have used EVFs in the past, and I do like it because it's literally what you see is what you get, I do find portrait sessions intimate, and so I like the fact that the optical viewfinder is clear, it's real time, and there's little distractions as much as possible. So how long will I be using this system? Well, the 645Z is surely old when compared to the new affordable digital medium formats. This is the Hasselblad's um, 1DX and then the Fuji's GFX systems. But so long as this camera can fire a shot, I'm for sure gonna stick with this camera for as long as possible. This camera shutter is rated at 100,000 and my 2015 body has 30,773 actuations. So there's plenty of life left in it. But I ended up getting a backup body because God forbid that this camera stops working for whatever reason during a paid shoot, I'd be left stranded without a camera of the same caliber to continue the shoot with. But if there was a bigger message though in this video as this crazy year comes to an end, it's this. Know not only your shooting style, but more importantly, know your subjects. Because I know new camera bodies come out every other year or so with greater features than the previous generation, which is amazing. But really ask yourself if your work, AKA your style and subjects, will actually utilize those features. I have no doubt that buying new things will help you make great images because I know for some, including myself, new gear inspires new work. And if you're a business, it's a tax write-off. But when it comes down to it, knowing what you don't need will really help determine what you will use. 
I'll end this video with a quick slideshow featuring some of my favorite images made with this camera made throughout the five years of owning it. And lastly, I do hope that this video has been helpful on the Pentax 645Z camera. If you have questions or comments, obviously leave them below, but more importantly, do take care and cheers to a more healthy and happy new year. Peace. But more importantly, do take care and cheers to a healthy, healthy.